Beckman for joining today, us today for Startup Canada's first entrepreneur town hall. Uh, my name is Kayla Isabel and I'm the new executive director here at Startup Canada. We are thrilled to have MP Ruby Sahota leading today's discussion, um, talking about the entrepreneurship ecosystem, challenges that we're seeing um, in light of COVID-19 and really um, how the government is actively working on supporting entrepreneurs. Um, and what we're seeing, you know, having conversations and having this dialogue between the entrepreneurship community um, and our political representation is, is more important than ever. Um, and, and Ms. Ahoda has been an incredible champion for small business and entrepreneurs um, and has been a great partner of Startup Canada. So we're really looking forward today um, to hearing an update from the government of Canada, um, but also sort of providing a space um, where we can, you know, identify any questions um, or potential challenges that we're seeing on the ground. So thank you very much for, for your participation today and to everybody um, on the line. So thank you for submitting uh, many of your questions ahead of time to everyone. We'll have time at the end uh, additionally to add um, a few other questions into the mix. Um, but uh, perhaps for now, what we can do is jump into um, an overall question. Um, you know, what are the ways that um, the government of Canada is supporting entrepreneurs and small business? And, and what have you been working on, uh, Ms. Ahoda? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually glad to hear you say that. Uh, there's uh, going to be comments and feedback, and I'm really am looking for comments right now because you've heard of uh, a few of the different uh, government supports that have been announced. Uh, there's a three point economic plan, and we'll get into some of the details of that in a little bit. I'm sure as the questions roll in, I'll be able to explain some of that. But some of it is yet to still be further developed, and uh, that's really important to note. And we have seen that there has been some challenges that businesses have been fa uh, facing. I've been getting many emails myself and your feedback has been very valuable uh, as we're seeing today with the the CERB benefit, the CERB, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. Um, that was a fantastic benefit uh, that we created in order to try to get money out the door as quick as possible. But of course, we're seeing that it doesn't capture uh, everyone um, or as many people as we would like to capture in that program. However, when designing it, we have to think about efficiency and speed at that moment and trying to get something uh, in the works. And so now that we know that there are some people that are still left uh, vulnerable, considering um, especially those people that uh, may have lost a substantial amount of income, uh, like I heard from a young woman who works as a speech a speech pathologist mm -hmm. and right now a lot of her work she's not able to do because uh, of the social dis distancing measures put in place and having to do it over um, you know technology and over these types of uh, platforms is not really something that many parents are comfortable with and some children do not work well with these types of means and so she's unable to work and uh, she is still helping some children but that leaves her with you know only a few hundred dollars a month and uh, that's not enough and I would still like her to continue to help children and not have her you know completely lose her income just so that she can get the CERB benefit uh, the CERB benefit uh, so we have those types of challenges and students and other people and we're trying to develop ways where we can um, bring forward uh, support for them as well and I've heard uh, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, uh, EDC or uh, BDC and uh, other big banks that it has been challenging for some of our employers. So we're still working with them. We're still trying to figure out ways where we can come up with better solutions. And we have heard on the credit card side uh, that took some negotiation, uh, but eventually we were able to get those uh, interest prices down. And so we're still working on it. That, that's it. what I just want to say at the um, beginning so that everyone understands that all the feedback that you give me today, I'm going to try to make notes. I have my assistant on the line as well. And uh, we're going to be taking those back to our daily meetings uh, that we have with ministers uh, virtually and uh, we're able to submit all of that feedback. So I think you'll be seeing some changes in the future. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, so maybe to kick things off a little bit, would you mind um, providing an overall overview of what support um, the government of Canada is currently providing entrepreneurs and small businesses? Just for those who might, um, you know, be overwhelmed by all of the different pieces of information that are coming out, how could you crystallize those support offerings um, in a few sentences, perhaps? Yeah, uh, I guess I should just go through a little bit of what the three-point economic mm -hmm. uh, 
plan is. And uh, some small businesses and uh, employers don't realize that they would also be uh, eligible for the CERB. Uh, now, this is something that may not uh, help support their business in the meantime, but at least it helps support them and their families and their current situation uh, when it comes to paying perhaps their personal bills or food or the utilities, right? And so a lot of small entrepreneurs uh, will be eligible for that. If they are having to lay off their employees right now at this time, their employees will also be eligible for that. So that's the... That's the safety net um, in case that there is no other um, help that you're able to receive. And or perhaps some entrepreneurs, I know some you know, people I know that have small businesses, uh, some medical clinics and stuff that are using this as um, a stopgap measure until uh, the wage subsidy rolls out. And so the wage subsidy is the second way uh, that we're trying to provide support to employers. And that is by um, a program wherein if you have lost about 30% of your revenues at this time, then you would be eligible as a small, medium, large uh, business or a not-for-profit or um, a charity, you would all be eligible for this subsidy. And in order to show the 30% um, loss of revenue, you'd basically use your typical accounting um, program that you use or your accounting, the way you do your regular accounting, and you would compare yourself uh, at the month that you think that you've lost the most revenue uh, currently or perhaps the month coming uh, and compare it to this time last year. And if you're able to show that, you should be in a good position to be able to get that wage subsidy. It's approximately $847 a week uh, per employee. Uh, however, mind you, if they weren't making that amount to begin with, that is not the amount that you would be receiving. You'd be receiving 75% of whatever your employee makes. Uh, either currently or before the COVID-19 uh, uh, effects. So if your employees were all making a little bit more perhaps uh, a few weeks uh, prior to COVID-19 happening and you had to decrease their wages at this time, you could apply for the original wage amount and get 75% of that original wage amount that you were uh, uh, paying them. And uh, But this does have a cap. It doesn't have a cap in terms of the number of employees, but it does have a cap in terms of the salary that you would be allowed to um, uh, get and as a result. And so that's where the 80, $847 a week comes in. So if your employee was making more than that, then unfortunately, uh, the high uh, paid employees would have to take a cut. Uh, they would still get the benefit, but they'd have to take a pay cut at this time. And we also are still encouraging uh, employers to still try to pay 100% of the wages and, uh, and then receive the 75% uh, percent wage subsidy. And on top of that, uh, there are programs that have been rolled out by EDC and BDC. A lot of the information is very, uh, you have to contact uh, the bank or there are many more um, details provided on Canada.ca. I went, was going through some of those details myself in the last several weeks and there's a lot of details on the wage um, or the work sharing program as well. So those uh, employers that don't find themselves fitting into the 75% wage subsidy at this time, they do, uh, they might still be eligible for the work sharing program, but they'd have to be, the employees would have to be eligible for EI. And so if you have EI eligible employees, that might be a program you want to look into. They basically extended uh, the weeks from 38 weeks to uh, 76 weeks. And uh, the waiting period that's usually required for that is not uh, no longer so you can immediately apply for that and I believe the loss of revenues um, that you would have to show under that program is anywhere from 10% to 60% so that that's another option and then also the original 10% subsidy uh, wage subsidy that was announced originally before we heard from a lot of our business community saying 10% is just not going to keep us afloat that's still an option as well so if people are not if employers are not at that point of 30% revenue loss, they may still be eligible for that 10% wage subsidy. So this is going to be an, a, a very important program that I think all employers should be exploring. Um, unfortunately, 
the parliament does have to be reconvened in order to pass some of these measures and therefore there is a little bit of a delay in getting this program out to employers and I really understand the stress that that's causing employers so we're going to try to get on that as soon as possible and uh, what the government is saying right now is that it's uh, a couple of weeks out. And uh, until then, there's also uh, the, the third point that I wanted to make, which is, uh, which is loans, which is credit from uh, the banks. And that's going to be an important support. I know that uh, people feel uh, stressed as their debt level rises, and a lot of us are carrying a lot of debt to begin with as Canadians. Completely understandable. Uh, that is also why there is um, the new $40,000 government banked uh, government-backed uh, loan program that has been developed. The banks should be able to roll that out in about a week. Uh, I know some banks have already been contacting people about uh, their, their plan of that program. So it is government-backed and if you have a payroll of 50000 to a million dollars, and that's a combined payroll. So if you have, um, I'm sure if you have one or two or three employees, uh, you would probably be able to meet that requirement of having a 50 uh, thousand to a million dollar payroll and so we're hoping that helps some people in the meantime as well. Uh, this loan will be interest free for two years uh, and as long as the, um, the loan recipient, the business is able to re repay that loan by 2022, December 31st of 2022, uh, they could get 10% loan forgiveness and uh, and get that back. So if they take the full 40,000, they would essentially get $10,000 of that waived by the government and would only have to pay back 30. Uh, and that's one measure. And we're also continuing uh, to work on other measures because I know there's restaurants that are hurting right now and a lot of businesses that are not seeing themselves fit in, in a few of these different categories. Mm -hmm. And so going back to that a little bit, can you describe um, specifically the work sharing program? For those who've never heard of this program, can you describe it um, in a bit more detail? Yeah, um, I believe this program is also um, just like uh, just like the work um, subsidy program, you would go on CRA's uh, website uh, through the My Business portal, and there is more information there. Um, like I said, it is for employees that are um, eligible for EI benefits. So if you are a workplace where your employees are eligible for EI benefits, um, basically EI would pay a portion of your employees salary uh, and so and so would you so you would be sharing um, the cost of keeping that employee on uh, so it's very similar to the wage subsidy program uh, it's a program that has been created for quite a, for some time now before the COVID-19 situation so some people may still find themselves falling and wanting to uh, take that program up I wouldn't be able to tell you unfortunately right now the exact amounts you would get it really is um, dependent on what the salaries of your employees are getting, how much they've, you've paid into the system. And so that is something that is up and running though, right now. And you can explore that you can be able to, you're able to get that right now while we're waiting for the wage subsidy program. So it may be a really good option for employers to start on that. And then nothing uh, stops or precludes them from switching over to the 75% wage subsidy once it is uh, rolled out and fully functional. Mm, fantastic. So for the sole proprietors and kind of pre-commercial startups, there are conversations evolving that are trying to figure out what um, measures are in place to support them. Um, what are you hearing and what options are you exploring on your end, specifically for those groups who aren't qualifying for these support services? Yeah, what we're looking at um, for the most part is ways that we can get uh, our big banks to be able to support you at this time. So uh, th that's what uh, a lot of the negotiations have been about uh, as to how we can make sure that more people qualify for supports uh, through the banks, uh, whether they are the EDC, BDC, or whether it is um, the big six banks. And, and so some of those talks are still ongoing, uh, just like we know that uh, you know, per our uh, residential mortgage. Uh, a lot of people have been successful in being able to get their residential mortgages deferred, but there are still some issues with um, paying leases and uh, being able to pay uh, investment property mortgages. And so that's something that 
um, or business mortgages, and that's something our business community is still struggling with. So that's, those are the things we're, we're trying to fine tune and work on, uh, figuring out how we can provide more credit. Fantastic. So I'll take a few questions from the audience. So from Keith, um, how will this wage subsidy apply to growth companies? So if your revenue is higher this year than last, um, but is below sort of the forecast, how are you navigating around those types of circumstances? Yeah, um, that question has come up and that, that, that is a difficult one. Um, I may have to get back to you on that. Sure. Because and to everybody in the audience, so we've collected all of your questions. Um, so yeah. we'll, we'll definitely be able to package something at the end. And, and if we aren't able to answer it directly right now, we'll find uh, ways to, to loop back to everybody from today's session. So that being yeah, unhappy. I, I think that's, that's a very difficult thing uh, right now. And it's something that uh, there is being thought given to. It's not the first time I've heard that question come up. A lot of the MPs have been posing it. Um, it is unfortunate because we do want uh, companies to prosper and do well. Um, and, and so perhaps there can be some way where uh, if what was forecasted at this time for you, yet you're not there, it's difficult to prove some of that stuff. Um, that, that's, the, that's the challenge and we don't want anyone to uh, take uh, incorrect uh, or uh, advantage of these programs and because uh, that could have some some. Uh, repercussions to that as well. So I will get back to you on that for sure. And I'll send that out to uh, you guys all via email so that you can share it with your um, members. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so another question from the Brampton Entrepreneurship Center um, for the CR CERB. Um, is income for a sole propriety before expenses or after? Um, for those who have lost, um, you know, potentially all of their business, but they still have online sales coming in, does that constitute as income or is that sort of a separate um, finance line? Um, so that is coming from uh, the Brampton Entrepreneurship Center. Yes, I believe so. I, I, I don't see why online sales would differ from what you would be reporting as your income. Uh, any income that is being brought in by a company uh, would, would uh, be included in the income calculation. Hmm, wonderful. Um, with uh, another question, so um, somebody is sharing that for businesses recovering from any industries, um, this support is really appreciated. So extending just some thanks to the Government of Canada for, for their work uh, and yours included. So if we uh, go to a few other questions that we had in advance. So for those who signed up for this webinar in advance, we provided a space to ask questions. Um, so I'll go through a few of those. If you do have additional questions as the conversation comes up, um, feel free to use the chat function and those questions come directly to us as uh, so we can field those as well. Um, so mainly a lot of the questions that we were getting um, ahead of time were looking at newly formed startups and sort of pre-revenue. So I think um, as this, this conversation evolves, bringing back that information to our community uh, would be wonderful. Um, as COVID-19 evolves and the sort of economic you know, circumstances change, um, how do you recommend that businesses uh, evolve their consumer expectations of the businesses that they buy from? Sort of more from a communications and, and um, expectations expectation setting standpoint? I, I mean, I think this is probably a question best answered by perhaps you, Kayla, <laughs> <laughs> the business experts, and uh, uh, in terms of tips and uh, how uh, to do that, I, I'm by no means uh, an expert in being uh, somebody who's developed or grown a business. I, I know many that are around me and I'm a supporter of them, but I, I think that really is a question for, um, for either our chambers of commerce. Uh, I know the Canadian uh, chambers of commerce has created a network. Uh, they're also providing a lot of support to businesses right now. They've launched a new program. So I'd also encourage uh, our entrepreneurs to go and check out what the Canadian Chamber of Con Commerce is providing. It's, it's, a, it's a great network and uh, they're providing different um, uh, feedback and uh, ways that you can evolve uh, your business during this time. Absolutely. And I think managing expectations, obviously staying up to date with as many resources that you can utilize, because that is obviously going to shape how your business um, sort of flows over the next coming months. So I think it's maintaining flexibility and agility and responding to, to different things as things move forward. Um, but exactly with, with the, the chambers, um, use, using resource um, organizations like that 
like Startup Canada, we're implementing a number of different support functions to, to bring entrepreneurs through the next couple of months because understanding there are challenges today, but we also need to be preparing for what uh, the, the sort of landscape looks like three weeks from now, a couple of months from now. So continuing this as an evolving conversation, I think is really important there. And I have to keep emphasizing that you got to go on Canada.ca. Um, you've got to keep going through the different links that are provided there. Uh, there's a wealth of uh, resources there and information and what you're necessarily hearing on social media or on the news even only captures a, a small fragment of that and sometimes doesn't get into the details. So there is a lot more detail on Canada.ca. Explore that site. I know everyone's burning the candle at both ends and uh, but it is th these are the tough times that a lot of us are going through and where I know we're staying up nights trying to learn all of this stuff as a small business it's very challenging but go right to the source mm -hmm. agreed and and um, from all of our perspectives as well we need to be using our networks to point people in the right direction so uh, we'll be sure to be sharing those resources um, as up-to-date as possible um, so additional questions from from the audience what measures do we have in place for freelancers um, who might not be impacted yet but who could see a downturn if this continues in the long term that some people are impacted right now um, and we're seeing the the business decline at this moment but how can we prepare for the long term and potential impacts to our business is. Once again, uh, you know, a, a very difficult question. I think many people don't know how to prepare because we don't know how long we're preparing for, right? We've heard things from uh, two years down to, uh, you know, hunkering, you know, buckling down for a couple of months. And uh, so it's really difficult to uh, make some of these predictions. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we function as normal as we really can with uh, at the, and at the same time, try to put public health and safety at the, you know, at most forefront so that people uh, are safe. And I know that's going to hurt our, our businesses, but that really is ha does have to be the priority at this time. And so um, for freelancers, I'd have to say probably their best resource. They're making some money right now. Uh, that's great. But if uh, they're unable to make the re uh, the income that uh, they are used to then, or they have zero income right now, they can apply for the CERB. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, there's some confusion right now about the CERB since today's the first day of applications. A lot of people think that they have to apply now this week. Um, and if they don't apply this week, then they're kind of out of luck. Well, this program is going to run until October. And so uh, nobody will be out of luck. It's basically dependent upon your circumstances whenever you find them, whenever you find yourself to be in that position of no income. And so that support will be there for you and it may get extended as well. That's one thing we're saying um, that the situation is evolving and we're trying to figure out um, how long we're going to and what supports we're going to have to change uh, in the coming time. This wage subsidy may look different uh, a month or two from now if we feel that um, we need something different and more flexible for employers. So we're going to continue to grow with you as you continue to figure out uh, and position yourself in this, you know, a very difficult economy and uh, just keep giving us your feedback because uh, there are going to be different programs created and uh, we heard that from the Prime Minister today as well. Mm, exactly. Uh, so another question from, from an audience member, will there be financial supports for the nonprofit social enterprise sector? Um, what specific supports are being lended to that community um, and will that include those that are in startup mode? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this uh, the wage subsidy applies to the not for profit. It applies to NGOs and uh, those uh, in the charity sector. Uh, so we wanted to make sure uh, at the beginning that was something else that the that detail was not there, but we heard loud and clear from those uh, sectors as well that they need the support uh, more than ever. And they're obviously having major challenges and they're also helping us uh, through this difficult time by providing supports to people. So yes, they are covered. Wonderful. Um, then looking at, and mainly a lot of our, our comments and concerns are coming from uh, communities that are pre-revenue, um, are looking at uh, those that don't qualify for some of the, the existing funding. Um, with the angel investor community, is there any um, you know, push to have those groups um, really step up their support um, and, and sort of invest their portfolios during this crisis? Is there a potential tax benefit that's being reviewed for the angel community that could help startup companies with their financial burdens? Do you know of any of those types of conversations that are happening? 
There are some conversations about that uh, and how we help investors and how we help church, uh, but, but no, not right now. Right now we are um, really closely just trying to focus on the big banks because that is the first place most people are going uh, to try to see what supports we can get there. There, there are, It's not that it's not coming up, it is definitely coming up. So thank you for that suggestion. And I think I'll try to further emphasize uh, that that's an area of support that we can look to and uh, perhaps with some incentives uh, rely more on. Wonderful. Um, Then looking for a few other questions. So um, how is the government treating commission-based companies? Um, How are we seeing that roll out in terms of support uh, in in a commission-based model as opposed to a traditional revenue model? Yeah, very good question. This came up uh, on the weekend uh, for me as well. Um, You know, I, payroll is what we had been looking at for this wage subsidy, but we know that there are many different ways that people uh, do get paid. Uh, So I do believe that the wage subsidy would apply uh, to all employees, uh, whether they are paid um, an exact income amount or uh, whether their income varies from month to month because they may be commission based. I, I, my belief and my understanding of everything that I've read is that they will be, um, they will be included in this. Uh, and once again, the whole legislation, we have yet to see some of the details of that. So I think that is when that question will be answered, but it is coming up and from the inquiries I've done, uh, the intention is to cover them. Hmm, wonderful. Then uh, we have a question from Helping Hands, Janelle. Um, what supports are there for nonprofits and charities who might have an actual higher demand of service, uh, but who might be struggling with getting donations? Um, so looking at grants as, as revenue it might not be consistent from month to month, but um, especially specifically in the nonprofit and charity space and, and looking at donations, is that a part of the conversation as well at the moment? Yes, it is. Um, it's coming up as well amongst all our, in all our meetings every single day. Uh, this is a question that is popping up. Uh, there was an announcement just a few days ago about the $100 million to food banks, uh, the $200 million to shelters and uh, um, other groups as well to help the vulnerable. And so uh, we are very much um, in the mind space that uh, we want to help and not leave anyone behind. So whether it is the government directly trying to provide uh, that top up and that support to those charities in certain sectors that we think uh, are being relied upon the most right now, um, or whether um, we can incentivize once again, uh, others to step forward and provide that support. That question is is coming up and we are looking at it. Right now we tried as a government to directly just help uh, those charities and groups that we think are the most in need right now. And so we will, with a combination of two, try to, try to step up and always help uh, where we think uh, it's needed the most. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, another so, uh, sort of half comment, half question of somebody expressing that they are aware that people are now turning down smaller gigs, um, so delivery, et cetera, uh, because they're afraid that if they work at all, they might not be eligible for this funding from the government. Um, so some small businesses could be um, you know, using that short-term temporary help um, and are having potential difficulties in getting it. Um, is the, the CERB a no funding if you work plan? Yes, and this is what I outlined uh, at the beginning. And right now, currently, that is the way it has been created. Um, we have provided a lot of feedback on this issue, just like that example I gave of the, the speech pathologist. We want you, we don't want to uh, incentivize people to stop working, especially those people that are uh, working in some of the essential um, essential sectors of our economy. Uh, there are people who are working in seniors' homes and people who are not getting the hours they once did, uh, but we don't want them to quit just because they can make more money on the CERB. So uh, that is something that is being worked on. And I believe within a couple of days or so, uh, there is going to be uh, some further rollout of another plan uh, that's going to be announced by Minister Morneau and the Prime Minister uh, regarding how we capture those people. So stay tuned. There is going to be something for you as well. Uh, There are supports we're thinking about uh, increasing for seniors. Uh, there's different community groups that we're, we're looking at. And, and even recently, uh, the United Way, I forgot to mention, the United 
family was a recipient of uh, uh, direct support from the government as well, so they can provide supports on the ground. So uh, we're trying to help in every sector possible. So you can still apply for the CERB if you have no income right now, but of course, hold on to those jobs. If you do have some income right now, there will be uh, some supports coming your way. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, are you seeing any business opportunities um, for small business and, and startups during the coronavirus situation? We're seeing many, um, you know, distributors or, or other, some organizations that are shifting their entire business model to respond to COVID-19. Um, can you share maybe some opportunities for the small business community and entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, there are some, you know, there's a silver lining, I guess, in some of this, even though it's hard to see at times. Um, I've seen and I think uh, there was a, a town hall that was put on recently by the Brampton Board of Trade as well, uh, where I'm you know, uh, an MP from and uh, I think different the trades are uh, highlighting the silver lining and uh, there are many ways you can transform your business uh, perhaps that didn't have a digital side to becoming more digital in these days uh, and and there are many apps that have been created to help support people at this time uh, many different things I mean I, I could I could definitely send you some ideas that uh, have been brought up to the government of Canada. I'm sure you've had some uh, ideas. I know startup, you're linked to so many businesses and you might have some cool stories to share with us, but I, I've definitely heard of, you know, and obviously anyone that's in manufacturing, uh, we're seeing at the, the higher level, they're being able to help government right now, retool, um, and scale up actually for some of the production that they're having to do in terms of PPE or other medical equipment. And that's, that's just, that's the obvious, but there's a lot of other, um, other areas where there's been growth as well. Fantastic. Um, how is the government um, financially supporting startups um, or sort of providing them with information on contract and PO revisions, um, potentially in, in different supply chains? Uh, but as a small businesses and entrepreneurs are looking to renegotiate their contracts, what resources the is the government of Canada providing to get them through that? Hmm. You know, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to have to send you uh, those resources. Uh, uh, I know that usually you would reach out to your accountants, your, um, you know, your legal advice, but uh, I know accountants uh, these days are quite busy as well as they're trying to understand the information given out by government and trying to guide uh, their small businesses. I know my husband, my husband is a small business owner and his accountant's been calling him quite a bit to give him information on different things and so has his uh, uh, advisor as well, his account manager. Uh, and so those have been great resources for him. But I'm going to find you some uh, resources from the government of Canada because I know there's some great things out there. Uh, I know that people are overworked in some of the departments right now just to try to roll out some of these programs. So some of the people that were usually there for advice um, have been brought in uh, to the mix of trying to um, roll out some of these programs and do what's needed uh, in in the immediate time but uh, i'll get you that yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and there's definitely been a lot a large shift um you know going to your financial institutions really activating the services that you're already bringing into the the loop with your business um as opposed to going to to bdc directly um to be looking at some of those support options going to your financial institutions i think is is really um, a key place to start if you're trying to kind of navigate these different components uh, another question, so we'll be wrapping up in a few minutes, so if, you, as, if anybody would like to pose any other um, questions in the Q&A or chat function, we'll, we'll try to get to those as well. Um, what about support for disabled persons um, at the moment? So in terms of support of housing uh, that might not be receiving the same level of care or at increased risk um, because many care workers um, have chosen to stay home, um, what supports are being offered to disabled persons at the moment um, under this sort of current circumstance? I, I think uh, it's best for us to, uh, in terms of this, I, I'm assuming that some of the supports that the person is looking for is, um, you know, local supports in terms of helping them uh, where they're situated. And so you'd have to really reach out to your municipalities for that. There is a lot of great information on uh, their websites. And I know for my city, they have a, a, a call-in number, like 311, where you can call in and request certain supports. Uh, they have a seniors task force, uh, and they're doing some great work in, the, uh, in order to provide seniors or people with disabilities uh, the supports that 
they need during this time and reach out to United Way as well. Uh, they are going to be reaching out to their network uh, organizations on the ground. So even if you don't have a big United Way chapter in your area, uh, you may have some of the organizations that are working with them that can, that can help you out with different needs you might have. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So we're seeing a number of additional questions really on, um, you know, prov providing uh, support for startup companies that might be pre-revenue or were pre-revenue this time last year. So I think just really echoing that sentiment that that seems to be where uh, many entrepreneurs within our community are struggling. And I'm, I'm sensing that from, uh, you know, conversations that we're having and then also in our Q&A here. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely try to keep everybody up to date as things evolve and, and um, connecting as those resources are explored in different different ways. Um, we do have a question about support, supporting older entrepreneurs. Um, are there any support functions in place to support that demographic of the entrepreneur community? Uh, like I was saying, uh, I don't know if it's going to be specific to older entrepreneurs. I mean, it, we're, when we were looking at entrepreneurship, we are, really are trying to look at it as a whole right now uh, and trying to help all of our uh, entrepreneurs and businesses uh, weather this storm. But uh, in terms of older entrepreneurs, uh, like I said, uh, there are other services. Uh, I didn't mention in, in the program that there is GST, HST. If you are receiving um, that, that, you know, that credit, uh, then you will get a top up in that credit. Uh, there are other supports such as the CCB. If you are somebody who has children, then uh, that's something you'll also receive a top up in in May. Uh, and like I said, C for seniors in particular, we are trying to see, even though they are probably get the, they might get the HS uh, and GST credit, we're trying to see what else we can do to support our seniors on top of this uh, announcement that was made for the United Way. Um, and maybe to close things out, uh, just sort of forecasting for the next couple of months, uh, what would be your advice that you have for the entrepreneurship community in, in one, staying up to date, so obviously going to the Government of Canada's resources, staying up to date uh, through the various support organizations that can potentially funnel um, the entrepreneurship community to the right spaces, uh, but what advice do you have for entrepreneurs that are, you know, managing really urgent requirements, but also trying to plan for the long term? What's what sort of some general advice you might be able to provide the community? Um, we are going through very unusual times and uh, not that I want, I want to be optimistic, but at the same time, I want to be realistic. And uh, th this is a time that we're going through that is uh, never been seen before. Uh, so I do want everyone to be very realistic during this time as well. Uh, as a government, we're trying to make sure that at the end of the day, people have a roof over their head, uh, people have, uh, you know, food to eat uh, and are safe, uh, whether it is um, within their surrounding environment or whether it is because of the, the virus, we want to make sure we keep Canadians safe. And so that really is our, our top priority. But at the same time, you have heard the Government of Canada announce many programs right at the offset because we want to be able to bounce back, uh, you know, after we get through this. We want our economy, we want our businesses to be in the best position possible so that they can bounce back. But we do understand, and I think probably most of your members in the business community do understand that this is not going to be um, a time of prosperity for, um, for most of us, right? There are some that may benefit some businesses uh, by changing their model a bit, uh, but even still, it will be very difficult, uh, I think, for most. And I, we have to keep that in mind. And I think first and foremost, we have to make sure that our families are safe um, and we're healthy. And I think that is going to be of the utmost importance. And so that uh, we have a good, we have a good, uh, understanding of um, what it is that our economy and everyone in every country around the world are, is going through right now. So we're all in it together. Uh, we really are. And I know some people sometimes uh, don't like hearing that because they, everyone does, you know, it feels the worst for the position that you're in. And I, I have to say that um, I'm not uh, not recognizing that uh, I'm probably one of the more fortunate people at this time in terms of uh, pay, and I, I do recognize that. So if anyone has that, you know, on their minds, but I'm surrounded by people that are 
seniors that are going to lose their business, like my in-laws that are uh, my husband, who's a small, who's an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, has his own medical clinic. I'm, I'm surrounded by the stories of what people are going through. And I really do understand. And I wasn't an MP forever. <laughs> you know, I, I, I had... Um, I had a life before this and a profession before this too, so I do understand what you're going through. And we're just keep giving us the feedback. And uh, I think there's probably many brilliant minds around you. And Startup Peel and Startup Canada is one of those uh, resources that's going to be great for you in this time when uh, you need help, you need good ideas. So keep up the great work is what I want to really say. Uh, and try to stay positive. Uh, at the end of the day, I think we all can stay positive if we really look at it as um, it's all about our health and it's all about our well-being. And I hope everyone is in a good state of mind as well, because that's really difficult and challenging at this time. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, and, and from Startup Canada's perspective, we'll be surveying our, our members um, consistently to try to make sure that we are getting feedback from the community that we're relaying um, to the appropriate leaders to make sure that that conversation continuously happens through these town halls, but then also through all of our existing programming. Um, in addition, any other feedback that people would like to share um, with, with you and with your community, um, what is the best way for entrepreneurs to be sharing this feedback as um, government resources are um, sort of rolled out? and being tweaked here and there and as you know the situation sort of evolves every day what's the best mechanism to be providing that feedback back to you Ms. Oda? Uh, email I think right now because all of us are having to work off of our computers uh, email is the best way uh, you can of course call your local MPs but I think if, if you have the ability to access email and email email us some of your details uh, and suggestions those are best because we have them in writing we're able to forward them easily and and really able to understand um, exactly what it is that you're going through and a lot of local businesses have been doing that and I really want to thank them uh, for educating me on some of the issues that they're going through and I have been able to uh, thankfully have calls and meetings every day with my colleagues where I'm able to share them. Mm, great. Uh, and then also the, the Canada Business app. Um, there are going to be a number of different updates that are provided through that as well. So that could be also a great space um, to, to be connecting there. Yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. I should have given that a shout out. That, that's a great app. You should definitely get that. Um, Minister Mary Ng uh, has a lot of um, uh, advice that she's able to provide on that, and she's taking a lot of feedback there as well. Uh, they're also doing uh, call-in businesses. Uh, her ministry has been doing a lot of uh, proactive reaching out. So we can link you uh, to that resource as well and link you and get you on their, their call list so that you can be a part of those discussions. Wonderful. So we'll share all of these um, sort of individual pieces of information as a follow up to today's conversation. Um, we will also we've recorded this session and we'll be sharing that um, with those who were unable to participate. Uh, and as I said, we'll be keeping these conversations going through a series of town halls and then through other survey mechanisms, um, at least from Startup Canada's perspective and connecting um, with many leaders, both in industry and government. So we will be sure to be championing some of those conversations. Um, so it is one o'clock. Thank you so much for your participation today, Ms. Sahota. This was um, um, I think a very important space to provide entrepreneurs with a platform to connect with you. Um, and thank you for continuing to champion entrepreneurs and small businesses every step of the way. We've really appreciated, uh, you know, your Herculean efforts to really bring this, this feedback um, to, to the right ears. Um, so thank you for that. We'll be rolling out additional town halls over the coming weeks and months to keep this conversation going, as I mentioned. Um, we will also be, you know, showcasing these different challenges to the relevant bodies um, and providing education and spaces from Startup Canada's perspective um, on a COVID-19 resource page. We've launched a series of webinars for different specialized um, audiences, so particularly with women in marginalized communities, um, and then also with our entrepreneurs um, across Canada, specifically um, with solopreneurs and those who are struggling with, with finance options. Um, so we do actually have a session tomorrow um, on the five W's of funding with Fundica um, to really identify some creative funding mechanisms that could be leveraged um, and, and seeing many of these questions come through specifically on those avenues. Um, I think that'll be a really great 
great conversation to see what finance options are out there in addition to the Government of Canada's um, resources there. So thank you everybody for your flexibility at the beginning of, of our session for our technical difficulties, but uh, I hope um, everyone uh, received a lot of value from today's conversation. And thank you again, Ms. Sahota, uh, for spending your afternoon with us. Thank you. And I'd love to join at some time when there's more development to some of the programs and perhaps be able to buy, uh, provide some of the more details. And, and also, let me know about your other town halls. Maybe I can be a participant and, and learn uh, more about the business side as well. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your afternoon.